It is Game Points with Matthew Ross. We're very, very pleased to now welcome in a former Montreal Expo shortstop. He played in this city from 1989 until 1992. Currently the manager of the Round Rock Express, a AAA affiliate of the Texas Rangers. We welcome into the show Spike Owen. Hey, Spike, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Very, very well. Uh, thank you so much for taking some time this evening. I'm sure it's been a very, very long time since you've done any media with uh, a Montreal outlet. Well, it has, uh, as you mentioned, probably 1992. Wow. Wow. Now, you were in, a, a, I guess, a, a, a pretty good time here, well, minus... You know what? I'm not going to say pretty good time. I'm going to say a very eventful time for the Montreal Expos. I mean, you go from 1989 when they go and they get Mark Langston down the stretch and, and the aspirations are so high to 91, finishing last place, a chunk falls off the Olympic Stadium, to 1992, Felipe Alou coming in. I mean, there's a lot of history in that just short time frame. Yeah, it was. It was uh, you know, obviously in 89 coming over. It was, uh, uh, you know, a great year and the excitement of, of – being able to, to get uh, Mark to come over and the expectations. And really, you know, I look back on those four years, and uh, we had some really good teams. I know, uh, as you mentioned, uh, 91 didn't go so well, but I'm just in those teams. Spike Owen joining us here on uh, TSN 990 as we chat about uh, his time here in the city of Montreal. You were uh, you came to the team in 1989, uh Buck Rogers was the manager. They go out, they trade for for Mark Langston. It, it doesn't. Oh, we uh, we've lost Spike Owen. We'll try and uh, get him back for you here. Uh, but uh, just great to hear a voice uh, uh, from the past for baseball here in this city. And and little uh, known fact, or maybe some Montrealers still remember it, but Spike Owen set a, a consecutive errorless streak at shortstop for the uh, National League uh, as an Expo, sixty three consecutive games without an error. His glove was in Cooperstown, I believe, uh, when he did set that record. So a nice achievement for him. And uh, Spike, of course, uh, was with the Red Sox prior to uh, the Expos. Uh, Stefano, what are you looking up for us? Well, in the 1986 playoffs, he hit a 429 in the ALCS against the California Angels and hit 300 in the World Series against the Mets. Fantastic. And that was his rookie season, was it not? Or it was early on in his career? It was early on. It was his uh, second full year in the bigs. All right. Well, again... A guy who wasn't necessarily known as a huge, huge hitter in his day, but a very good glove. Uh, do you remember his number, Mo? You're a little young, though, perhaps. for. Uh, I believe it was somewhere in the 20s, the number. That's incorrect. Then what number was it then? It's number 11. Number 11. Yes, number 11. Shane Andrews' number. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, Shane Andrews' number. I'm not a fan. was not a fan of Shane Andrews. Was a, Overhyped Shane Oh, Andrews. a very, very big detractor of, of Shane Andrews. Don't get me started. I hear on you. Shane Andrews, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it'll be nice to uh, touch base once again with uh, with with Spike Owen. As uh, again, can you imagine being in a in all that time frame? We, we didn't even mention Tim Raines being traded as well during that time frame. So a lot happening uh, in that organization. I believe we now have uh, Spike back with us. Uh, hi, Spike. Uh, sorry to. Uh, hey. Thanks for coming back on. Yeah, sorry about that. We're out here in the desert, and uh, we're on the road here through some mountains. So. Hopefully it'll be. Hopefully it won't lose you. Well, again, you 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 were in a sort of an up and down period with the Expos uh, when they acquired Mark Langston. What was the mood in that clubhouse, and and did you uh, did you have World Series aspirations at that point? Oh, absolutely. I mean, with the ball club that we had, and and getting somebody like Mark, who's a proven, uh, you know, one of the top left-handed pitchers in the game, we were we were very excited and absolutely had aspirations of winning the whole thing. Spike was uh, with the Expos uh, from 89 to 92. It certainly covered a, a lot of things, uh, including Tim Raines leaving the team and, and you know being traded away. And, and 1991 season, uh, having to play the rest of that uh, season on the road uh, because of the Olympic Stadium uh, problems. At that point, was that something that uh, the players were just absolutely floored by, that they have to end the season on the road? I mean, that's not something that happens every day. Well, no, and obviously it caught all of us off guard and uh... – just, uh, you know, the, the, but the other side of that is we we wanted, every, you know, the, the stadium to be safe and for the fans and us and everybody else. So it was something that you just had to deal with. We understood it. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty weird way to, to, to end the year. But, uh, you know, we got through it. 
Were you on the field for the perfect game at Dodger Stadium by uh, Dennis Martinez? Yes, I was. I was at shortstop, and uh, that was uh, that was an outstanding, obviously, a, a, a great day, a great game, and uh, you know, it's something that uh, that you know that I cherish as far as being a part of that, and being able to play in one. In terms of ex expos, do you still chat with any of them? Do you still uh, talk with any of them? I still talk with uh, Tim Wallach. I uh, stay in touch with uh, Tom Foley and Mike Fitzgerald. Yeah, we still stay uh, stay in contact. Chatting with Spike Owen, uh, formerly of the Montreal Expos from uh, 89 to 92, currently managing in the Texas Rangers system. Uh, are you enjoying uh, your time now as a manager? Uh, I know you spent some time with the big club in spring training as well. Yes, uh, I have, and I, I have to correct you a little bit. I'm actually not the manager. I'm the third base coach okay. and the infield coach in in Round Rock, and I'm uh, starting my second year there. I was the infield coordinator for my first two years here with the Rangers, and uh, then went to Round Rock last year, and will be be back there this year. And it's uh, it's great for me. Round Rock is about a 45 minute drive from my house in Austin, so I. I get to be close to home, and it's uh, it's worked out great. It's a great uh, facility, and it's run great, so it's uh, been a lot of fun. Is there any difference between uh, the Cactus League and the Grapefruit League fundamentally, or is it just baseball, basically? Uh, it's just baseball, basically. I think the, the biggest difference is Arizona. Uh, I like the weather a lot better. I also like the, the fact that most of the teams now are, are fairly close proximity, whereas you know, the Cactus League, depending on where you are, you can have some pretty long road trips uh, during the spring. So I, I like that fact that everybody's kind of grouped together out here. And it's, uh, you know, for most places, it's, it's you know, 20 to 30-minute drive is that. And uh, there are a few that take a little bit longer. But it's, it's awful nice to have everybody so close. Spike Owen joining us here. Uh, 1992, your final season with the uh, the Montreal Expos. Uh, an interesting time, uh, obviously, with uh, Tom Runnels in spring training with you know army fatigues on. What, what was your uh, pr- you know your, it's such a famous image in a lot of Expos uh, fans' memory seeing some of those clips. How did the players react to that? Uh, there wasn't a lot of reaction. You know, uh, you know we had known uh, Cr just coming up and, you know, being in AAA, and then he had come join the club and uh, uh, when the AAA season was over a lot. So, but uh, I don't know. It didn't It didn't really phase any of us. It wasn't uh, – I know it got a lot of media attention, and I don't know if that's exactly why he did it or, or, or whatever, but it wasn't uh, anything that really had any kind of an impact on the players, in my opinion. That was an interesting season. Certainly the Expos had a great second half of the year. Uh, Felipe Alou comes in in May. Uh, Dennis Martinez uh, vetoes a trade, and then things kind of took off towards the end of that year. Uh, was it was there a, a real change in that clubhouse when Felipe Alou took over? Yes. Yes, it was. It, uh, you know, Felipe's been around a long time, and his demeanor and his makeup, uh, he, brought, he, he just brought out a lot of confidence uh, I know him myself and the other guys on the team, and it's really just kind of two opposites of of managing styles and clubhouse atmosphere and things like that. So, uh, you know, we were, you know, you, you hate to see anybody lose a job. And, uh, oh, boy. guess we lost that Spike Owen again. Uh, boy, those desert... Uh... Cell towers aren't so good out there, huh? Or he could be at the Big O, where the uh, reception is pretty bad out there. Oh, well. Oh, well. You know, I had a couple more questions for Spike, but, you know, we'll thank him and, and you know, send him on his way. We'd love to hear his uh, thoughts on the 94 situation. And certainly uh, no baseball here in Montreal, but uh, maybe we will get Spike back for a couple more questions. We'll take a, uh, a quick break here on a TSN 990, try and fit in uh, Spike Owen on the other side of the break. This is Game Points. We're here till midnight. And we're back. A couple more questions with Spike Owen, a former Expo from 1989 to 1992. He's uh, he's out in the desert, and it uh, could drop at any second, so we'll, <laughs> we'll bring him back in. Hey, Spike, thanks so much for uh, taking another minute or two with us. Really appreciate it. Uh, no problem at all. Hopefully we'll get through this one. 
All right, all right. Uh, number one, you were gone by the time 1994 came around when that strike hit. Uh, but your thoughts on uh, on that season that, that never was for the Expos? Uh, certainly, you were a teammate of many of those players. Oh, I was, and uh, you know, obviously uh, disappointed for those guys. It was uh, what a year they were having, and uh, which really didn't surprise me at all. With you know, I knew uh, when. Uh, the Expos weren't going to sign me back. The the potential of you know with Larry Walker and Marquise Grissom, Lionel DeShields, and and on and on and on. The, this this the great talent they they had coming up on that team, and so I was disappointed for them without any doubt because they were really having a great year. And then obviously the Expos lose their team, or Montreal loses their team in two thousand and four. Uh, did you did you think back to your days here and and what the fan base was like when when you were here, or what were your impressions when they lost their team? Well, it's sad, you know, to see uh, you know the, the, the team that I played for and had ties to not not be able to to keep the team. You know, it was you know obviously we went through some good times and bad times, and uh, you know it's it's. Unless you play there full time, you know I don't. I don't know that you can really appreciate it. I mean, I enjoyed my four years there. You know, otherwise I wouldn't have. You know, I was a free agent after my first year and signed a three-year deal to stay. So uh, I enjoyed the city. I enjoyed the team. You know, it was really a. Really, you look back on it. It was four of the funnest years I had playing. Whether you know, and I know there was some tough years in there, but just with the. Uh, quality of people and personnel uh, around the club. It was uh, I had a lot of fun playing there. So, but understanding logistics of Major League Baseball and you know the money and everything else, it certainly can understand you know why uh, why they they had to move. Spike, our uh, our afternoon drive host here on the station. His name is Mitch Melnick, who covered the team back in your day. He says, "Please say hi to Spike Owen for me. Tell him I'd still like to bu- uh, a pair of his cowboy boots." <laughs> Well, I got plenty of them. What size do you wear? I, I got to check. I got to check for you. I'll, I'll text you later or something. <laughs> All right, man. All right. No fi- yeah, tell, tell Mitch I said hello. All right. Fair enough. I will. And the uh, final question for you. Uh, you're, early on in your career, you had a chance to play in the World Series with the Boston Red Sox, and you were tremendous as well with those stats in that World Series. Uh, that must have been bittersweet for you, though. Oh, definitely. You know, it, uh, you know I'm just thrilled that, that you know, that, in my career, I had a chance to play in the series. That's every player's dream. Uh, and obviously, it didn't come out the right way, the, the way that we wanted it to. And to be so close and not be able to close it out definitely stings. And it's, uh, you know, it's something that you you uh, just move on and live with, you know. But, but being so close and not winning it, uh, you know, it, it's something that I don't know if you ever really totally get over. It's what if, but, you know, that's the way it goes. Of course, uh, one player who uh, helped to do your team in was Gary Carter starting that rally in Game 6. Uh, your thoughts on Gary Carter's passing? Uh, it was very sad. You know, I was uh, feel for the family. We became, uh, I think, uh, really close in Montreal when he came back for his last year and uh, spent time with his and his family a lot on off days and different, uh, different things. So, you know, kid, he was a great man, a great baseball player, and it's uh, a real tragedy and really sad that uh, him to pass away so young. Well, Spike, on behalf of all the Expos fans who enjoyed watching you play shortstop uh, during your tenure here, we really appreciate the effort you gave every game, and uh, thank you so much for taking some time out tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, Matthew, thanks for having me, and I can uh, just say to, to everybody, the Expo fans there, thanks for you know the four years I was there. They're, they're always very good to me. All right, fair enough. Best of luck uh, this season with your team. All right, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right, there you go. That was a Spike Owen. Uh, happy to stick with us uh, during his uh, cell phone war, as uh, a lot of lot of Arizona, I don't know, uh, um, mist maybe or tension or what's the word we're looking for? Distortion out there. Uh, dry air. Dry air. Speaking? Yeah, yeah. The dry air. Great interview with uh, with Spike Owen.